Today, we are on Charmop's account. He is part of the first wave of people that got Marius. So over here, you see he's collected Marius. So congratulations to him. And he was uh, nice enough to let me onto his account so that I could actually test Marius because, uh, you know, it's going to be a little, bit, a little bit before I actually get to test Marius. So I've been wanting to kind of get get a little taster you know trying to trying to see what i what i'll be what i'll be getting my hands on soon and he's got a three star blessing for him so in this video we're gonna dive into his kit dive into the way that he's got him built luckily he's already had him built he would want me to let you guys know that he is missing one legendary book but you know it is what it is uh but that's that's not going to change too much about what, what's going to happen so we'll dive into live arena we'll do a little bit of hydra and um yeah so here he is marius in the flesh or in digital flesh looks pretty cool uh, he looks more like um a beta ray bill i don't know if there's any uh, thor fans out there anybody who reads the graphic novels but that's as soon as i saw him i was like beta ray bill anyway defense based champion coming out of the skinwalkers you get him and for anybody who's watching this who doesn't know you get him from completing the marius missions which is a separate branch that unlocks for you after getting arbiter this is a, a very uh, late game thing. Surprisingly enough, it's kind of weird. It takes a lot longer to get Ramantu <laughs> than it does to get Marius. Like, Ramantu took me a long time to get, but Marius, I'm, I'm almost done with Marius myself. So let's go ahead and talk about Marius. He's got two Kaimars. Oh, let me, let me just take a look at this account real quick. He's got a plus two Mikage, a plus one Frolny. I don't know how good Frolny is. But he has Allah's the Sun Bearer. This guy looks like an absolute super fucking Saiyan, bro. Oh my god, look at that. He's got the golden hair. He's all buffed up. He just looks really cool. So, I, you know, it's one of those champions that I really want. Marius. His A1, AoE, 35% chance. Books up to a 50% chance of placing Enfeebled for one turn. For those of you who don't know what Enfeebled is... I will try to find it real quick. Uh, let's see. I think it basically means that you're going to... Yeah, here. Champions who have the Enfeebled debuff can only land weak hits unless stated otherwise in a skill description. For the longest time, it was only... Um, what do you call it? It was only the Phantom Shogun that had this debuff. But now, you know, we have more champions. We have uh, Kung Fu Panda, who's got it. Um, he's got an Enfeebled debuff. And now Marius on the A1. Unfortunately, this isn't going to work on the bosses in raid. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to place Enfeeble on on uh, the Hydra or the dungeons. No, they Polarium saw that, saw what we were saying, and they changed that. Look at this, guys. Only 34 people have, 33 people have raided him. Um, he hasn't raided him yet. I'm not going to. But yeah. All right, his A2 is an AoE three-hitter. Defense, enemy max HP. So the damage is based off defense, but this move right here is a three hitter, which, as you already know, coming from, you know, if you know who Ocrisia is or or Iron Gut, you guys will know that moves like this usually smack quite a bit. This is a three turn cooldown. Each hit decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. That's an insane ability to have, especially on a three turn cooldown. His A2 places increased accuracy and increased defense on all allies for three turns three turns guys i'm assuming with masteries you can get that up to four turns even sometimes then places a stun debuff on the enemy with the highest turn meter for one turn finally grants an extra turn that's galloping thunder with one extra book that's gonna drop down to a uh wait a minute is it i never understand is it five turns and then goes down after you book it to four turns this is probably gonna be a four turn cooldown that's normally what we see which means that because of the granting an extra turn mechanic, it's really like three turn cooldown because you do this. Like, let's say this is booked out all the way, four turns, you use this move, then it immediately grants an extra turn. That means we're going to go down one for the cooldown. So that's more like a three turn cooldown. And you can roll right into this, which is pretty nice. His passive, the champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects and decreased speed. Nothing's stopping this horse from going. It's all the way. He's going to be galloping all the way. Riding on Thunder. Whenever an enemy changes forms or attempts to decrease the champion's turn meter, 
counterattacks using this champion's default skill. That means he's a great pair against mythical champions. Now, increased defense in all ally battles by 35% is a strong aura to have cruelty. Whenever this champion hits an enemy, well, I mean, that's his skills. We're going to dive into the blessing, the blessing, uh, which is a good blessing to have. Cruelty. Whenever this champion hits an enemy, decreases their defense until the end of the round. And this bumps up all the way to 20% for champions, 10% for bosses, giving him an extra boost to defense. And of course, it's going to go even um, further the higher the blessing that you go. I think another good option might be... Mm, what is it? There's another one that I... Is it? Crushing Rend. The first hit each round will ignore a percentage of the target's defense, ignoring 1% defense for every 40 levels. Now, I always get confused myself between Crushing Rend and Cruelty. I can't remember which one is the best one to, to go for, but I know on, on one of my Acrisias, I have uh, I have them in Crushing Rend, and on the other one, I have Cruelty. But I think you can't go wrong with either, but if somebody wants to correct me down in the comments, please do. You know, I always thrive off of your guys' um, feedback so I can become a better raider slash, um, you know, person who, what do you call it, does uh, does YouTube stuff. These are the pieces of gear. It looks like we're prioritizing a lot of speed. Got to get some accuracy in there, I think, for the A1. High crit damage. It looks like he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Of course, there's the accuracy crit damage on the gauntlets. Some accuracy there. Defense on the chest. Then we have defense on the boots as well. More defense. Of course, he is a defense-based champion. We like defense-based champions because they're tanky. Little extra crit damage with some defense. Probably uh, when, whenever he gets the chance, he's probably going to change this to crit damage. And then accuracy. And then, of course, he's probably going to change this again. But yeah, maxed out. We'd love to see it. Except for these two, but you know we'll get there. Here are the masteries for Marius the Gallant. Of course, as always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy masteries. He is built like a damage dealer, like a nuker. So, of course, we're going to be going down the Helm Smasher route, taking extra crit rate, crit damage, damage to shields. So anybody who goes into the fight with shields is going to be taking an extra 25% extra damage from us. You could also take you know, either one of these. It really just kind of depends on what you want. If you're going to go first, there's nothing wrong with taking part of glory. But this is a totally viable option, a great option. Life Drinker, single out. Enemy max HP is higher than yours. You do more damage. Methodical, this is especially good because of his A1 is an AoE. So the more damage, or the more times he uses his A1, he's going to be doing more damage. And of course, Cycle of Violence to have a chance, a 30% chance to reduce the cooldown of a random skill by one if it exceeds the target's max HP. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, let me go back here. If you have a six-star blessing, if you have a six-star blessing, Charmop's letting me know right now, if you've got a six-star blessing, then you'd want to go Crushing Rend. But other than that, you're going to want to take Cruelty. So, yeah. And then for back to the masteries, because he is a defense defensive champion and he he does provide a lot of support, I usually like going down the defense tree. If you want, you can go down the support tree tree for some extra stats. Nothing wrong with taking cycle of magic on top of that. But I prefer, especially as an end game player, to be going for defense, just because I feel like defense is more of the advanced uh, section uh, mastery tree. Extra defense. Damage mitigation here. Me personally, I probably would have tried to get improved parry just because crit hits are the ones that kill, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking this. So I guess my route would have been something more along the lines of this. Defiant, Rejuvenation with improved parry, and then I would have gone down to Resurgent and then taken this as well. Of course, you want to take counterattack masteries. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with here uh, taking taking this, this path here from AoE damage. Uh, you know, this is really good, especially in Hydra. You could also take Cycle of Revenge. There's nothing wrong with Cycle of Revenge if you want to get him to uh, take more turns. Nothing wrong with having this horse take more turns. So, we've seen the kit. We've seen the skills. We've seen the masteries. Oh, I haven't showed you guys the total stats. Now, 
He is at 50k HP. Attack is going to be completely useless for him, so don't take attack. Almost 7k defense. That's pretty good. And as always, I like to see around 220 for Nukers, so he's well above that. A good damage dealer is going to be going at least 220. You don't want to be one of those damage dealers that don't um, move fast enough to take a turn and they end up sleeping on the floor. Uh, common mistake, but don't worry. Uh, he's got it. He's got a good 231. Of course, if you can go faster. Uh, over crit, but that's fine. I guess the, the threshold is somewhere around... For me personally, I don't like going this far over, but it is what it is. You know, he is in Slayer gear. I, I actually didn't even touch on Slayer gear. So if you don't know, a full nine-piece set is going to give you extra crit rate, crit damage, speed, champion turn meter fill. So he's going to be going even faster whenever hit by AoEs. Crit rate ignores 30% like a, like, a, like a savage set when you're using AoEs. Extra crit damage speed, and then a 30% chance to repeat the damage dealt by AoE skills. Of course, he's got a bunch of AoE skills. So, this is perfectly fine. He's already going to be moving fast with his kit. And yeah, so I usually like to go closer to around 100%, but that's totally fine. It's better to have more than less. 250 crit damage is the minimum that I, I usually look, look for when, I, when I'm trying to build a nuker. So this is totally good. If you can head towards 300, that would be even better, but it's understandable. 380 accuracy is pretty solid for what you're going to be uh, needing. Now, when it comes to me, I would probably pump a little bit more to try to meet the 400 minimum because... In Hydra, oftentimes, uh, depending on what level you're at, like you're going to get away with, with just 380. It's more than enough for something like normal and hard. I try to go for 400, personally, for both res and accuracy, if I know he's going to be a Hydra champ. But if this is the best you can do, you know, as always, do whatever you can. Uh, and you do get uh, your boosts from the Slayer sets. And, oh, he just pointed it out to me. He does actually give increased accuracy. So there you go. I completely forgot about that. He's letting me know in the chat right now that because of this move right here, the 50% increase to accuracy, there's no need. So I rescind what I was saying. He could actually go lower. He could go actually lower on the accuracy, pump that into more crit damage, maybe a little bit of resistance, or maybe go over that 7,000 mark or even get more speed. And then HP is fine right there. I usually go around 40k myself for damage dealers. But again, he's really tanky as a defense-based nuker. So let's go ahead and dive into Live Arena first. And let's go touch toes with somebody else. Car Luke. 1980-1995. Oh, we get to mess around with some mythicals today. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's bring in Makage and Alaz. This is gonna be fun. My first time, um, you know, playing with with some mythical champions, and not just any mythical champions. They got you know, they got the plus and everything. All right, where's Marius at? Now this is silver. Um, totally fine. But just know that things kind of kick up like tenfold once you start getting into gold and and higher. Uh, things change a little bit. So if you're watching this, keep it in mind. Don't be surprised if Charmop's account smacks. Don't compare it to yours is what I'm trying to say. We're going to get rid of... Uh, should we even worry about Armands if Mythical Champions can't be re decreased cooled? All right, how does it work again? Are they immune to stuns? Let's just get rid of... I, I naturally just want to get rid of Armands. All right, we're going to take extra... Extra... Let's see, 35? Resistance, maybe? HP? I don't know. What, do, what should we take? We'll, we'll go with the, the, the lead here with Alaz. He does seem to have the higher blessing. All right. What's going to happen here? Nice. Necrit's protecting him. Oh, he, Necrit doesn't have... um. Oh, what happened there? How come Marius just took a move? He just did a thing. Look at that. Marius just standing like nothing happened. He got hit by Taurus and stood still. Not even flinched. Oh my god. This is awesome. Alright. Increase accuracy. 
increased defense, stun, and then grants an extra turn. So, of course, we're going to run from A3 into A2. And then we're going to hit the A2. How hard does it hit? Oh, my God. 13K. Oh, my. And just decreased the duration of everything. Oh, my. Holy moly. All right, let's go Super Saiyan. Woof. Big boy here. Restores all allies. Destroyed max HP. Attacks. Oh, my God. Look at this. Solar Flare. 53. Almost 30K on that one. Let's see. What does this do? Uh, Lacerate. Exterminate the... Oh, can we transform? What does transforming do? Oh, first form of Alaz is stronger to use the A2? Okay. I didn't know that. But now I do. Let's 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 put some protection up. Is he gonna use his A3? Boom. Not even worried. Look at this. Look at this. Enfeeble. Doing nothing. Let's just go ahead and get rid of Taurus. Let him think about his mistakes. Boom. Same with Frolny. First form is for damage. The second is for support. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Ooh, look at that. Oh, Sun Wukong. What are you going to do? For as strong as you are, it's not going to be much against these three big boys. Look at that, guys. That was sick. I enjoyed that fight. Let's go ahead and change it up a bit. Let's go in with no mythicals. Although that was fun. Again, big shout out to Trimop. Thank you for letting me on this account here. Getting the content content out while it's still relatively um relative, I guess. Allah's Harima combo is nuts. All right, I'll I'll, I'll throw in Allah's and, and Harima just for the just for the recommendation. Ooh, we should bring in. Never mind. Oh wait, no, we're in silver. I, I can still do this. Yeah, because in gold, you 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 um you kind of have to think a little bit more about what to choose, because you can't pick the same champions over and over again. Oh, he's got Yumiko. But if we're in silver, I don't have to worry about it. We're probably gonna have to ban Yumiko. I just said no mythicals, and here I am going with mythical. Oh, I'll do one more without mythicals. Okay, where's Marius at? Let me just type in. I'll do another fight after this. Sorry. Mythicals are just kind of like a no-brainer. So I think what we can do, since we don't have to worry about uh, our cooldowns, well, let's get rid of our mons here. Like, we do have to worry about our cooldowns, but I don't think... We have to worry too much just because Marius and Harima are going to hit super hard. And these two aren't going to have their skills put on cooldown. And actually, Harima has a high level blessing. And we can take extra res. So we could actually maybe even resist the cooldown. We'll see. Alright, so they're going to go first. She's going to use the A3. He's probably going to use the lockout skill. And he's probably going to use his A3 as well. Yep. Okay, so we all get our skills put on cooldown. And like I said, he's doing his A3. We're going to transform. Just because I feel like that's the thing. And what does she do? Oh, we can stun with the A2. Okay, not everybody. Who's next? Marius going pretty fast here. And boom. Look at that. Sleep. Get the fuck out of here. That's right. That's right, bro. Marry us all the way. All right. Now we're actually going to do one more without any mythicals. And we'll see how well we're going we're gonna to do. So let's start off with, of course. Oh, wait. We don't have to worry about that, actually. I keep, I keep thinking I'm in gold. I should actually... Oh, we have Yumiko also. I should actually drop down to um, silver so I can get uh, easier fights now. Because I hate being up in gold. Yeah, Marius with the nukes, bro. Marius with the nukes. And he doesn't just nuke. He hits you so hard that you have to do nothing but... It's okay, babe. I'm, 
my wife is worrying about co babe can you can you give me more coffee too please my wife is here and let's go ahead and we'll probably have to ban no we're gonna ban our mons let's see who should we i don't want to take any mythicals just to try it out thanks honey i love you i guess we'll just take arbiter to try and go fast gotta go fast right Oh, which means I made a mistake. I was a little distracted. Yeah, Marius is going to be the only nuker here. So hopefully he doesn't ban uh, Marius. Let's just get rid of our mons. Oh my god, he's such a fucking idiot. I would have had no damage. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a mean thing to say. That's a mean thing to say. But sometimes the gamer in me just kind of... Wants to talk his shit. Alright, that's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Go take your turn. We've got Marius on our side. Oh my god! Arbiter! We're fine. This is fine. This is fine. I, I guess... I guess uh, I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat it. Oh my god! You sheeped him! You fucking asshole! How does that work? You can redirect sheep? Dude, I, I came in here talking so much shit and now I'm getting my cheeks clapped. Whoa, how does he do that? What, I gotta check his... What, are, what the fuck is he doing? What the fuck? How was he attacking? It's not even his turn. I gotta, I gotta check out his, uh, his passives again. Look at that. Are you looking? Are you looking at that, that enfeeble hit? Oh boy. Okay. Oh my god, what the fuck? Grant an extra turn. Smack away. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. All right, guys. So you can see the glory that is Marius in Live Arena putting in some fucking work that was awesome i love to see that shit let's take him into dragon i i just kind of want to throw him in to dragon 20 by himself just to see what he does by thanks baby i love you my wife brought me coffee we're gonna go in with just marius alone just marius alone just him by itself oh when marius decreases the turn meter he counters oh that's how it works so anytime someone tries to decrease the turn meter he hits with a counter and look at all that look at that slayer set on him that's that's awesome he keeps getting his turn meter boost oh my god the dragon is like what the fuck is going on oh ah. look at that he just keeps getting speared he's getting piped up no diddy oh no, i got some wild statements but I'm not a bank, though. Look at that. He got piped all the way up. He got speared. He got penetrated. Complete violation. Uh, nothing, babe. I'm just playing my game. My wife is like, what are you saying right now? <laughs> and finally, let's go ahead and take him into Hydra. I want to see how he does in Hydra. Um, we're, I'm just going to put a bunch of nukers in. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm not going to save the key. I'm just going to go ahead and throw him in and um, see how we do. See how we do here. Like how much damage is going to come out of this. Oh, let's just have a completely bonkers, bonkers team. Should I don't want to take a laws in for this one. Acrisia. And we'll take in Lydia. This looks good, all right? And they're just gonna run it on auto. We'll run it for a little bit. Let's get to turn 20. And I think turn 20, we'll get a good idea of how much damage he actually did and compare it to Acrisia. Wow, look at that. This head is almost almost dead already. It, he didn't even get to take it. She did not, not even a turn. 
Not even a single turn. And by the way, guys, thank you for over 1,600 subs. I appreciate you guys supporting me on my journey, doing YouTube, and doing Raid. I don't know, man. Like, Acrisia... Does Acrisia need to step aside? We'll see. We'll see what the damage comparison is once we get to... And I'm not clicking anything. I'm leaving this on full auto. We'll get to turn 20 here. We'll see what to do. And he's so tanky. He's so ta Oh, wait, what just happened? Oh, the reflect damage. The reflect damage happened. That's that's what it is. Because both of them had reflect damage. And because of his AoEs, that messed it all up. So I guess if you wanted to, you could focus down on just these champions here that, that place uh, reflect damage. Yeah, because that's going to mess everything up. All right, come on, bring him back. Get up. Arbiter, do your job. You have one job, Arbiter. Do it! Make Marius' dreams come true and just... There you go. Oh, I love coffee. All right, we're at turn 12. I feel like we missed out on some damage, though, to be honest with, with Marius. But I guess I guess we'll we'll see, right? Cuz if it still turns out that he did bonker damage even when he was dead for like 5 turns, that's really saying something. On normal it's not the best, but brutal and nightmare they'll do more damage. Yeah, that's also true because uh, and that's a good thing to point out. Oh, someone got Taurus. That's a good thing to point out because because the Hydra Heads have lower HP on normal, anybody who does EMHP moves like Acrisia and Marius are going to be do or like Nut, for an example, are going to be doing a lot less damage as opposed to when they're going up against Brutal or Nightmare, where the Hydra Heads have more max HP for them to increase their damage based off of. Not uh, based off of, not past tense based. I speak English. All right, 19 turns. And let's let Marius get one more hit in. Look at that. It's, his health is just not doing any, and it's not going anywhere. All right, let's end it right here, and we'll see. Okay, Marius. Wow, look at that, guys. Marius, who was dead for like five or six turns, out damaged Acrisia. That's insane. Of course, this is on normal again. If you take this up to Brutal or Nightmare, it's going to be a lot different. Wow.